Let's call the finance committee meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. for March 15th, 2023. Select board, do you wanna do your thing? <clears throat> Trevor there. Oh, no, he just went out for a sec. He ran away. Okay, I'll, I'll call the select board um, to order at 5.33. Okay, so do we have minutes to review? I think uh, sent them out a few days ago. Yep. For the that was probably... should have two to review, right? Right, the twenty eighth um, and the seventh. And I think yeah. I sent you some revisions for the twenty eighth, right? Um yes, and I, I circulated into the bonds. You did. Okay, great. I, hope I, did. I didn't see it, so I I I I should have asked you about that today, but I didn't. Um, let me just check my sentence. Could be you sent them to to the committee, which is the most important thing. You're on the list, though. Yeah. Committee is here on it. And maybe I just missed them. So. Um, yes, uh, minutes of the meeting for February twenty. I did not send out the revised version. Okay. Maybe we should vote you know that what? one next week. Why don't week? we just wait and do them next week? Um, Sounds good. How about the one for the last week? Uh, Whatever date that was, the 7th? Yeah, I, seven. I, I wrote it up. But yep, I saw those. <clears throat> yeah, you, oh, you yes, sent those. Yes. Yeah, that was sent on um, March. 12th. Okay, um, so let's have a motion. Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of March 7. <clears throat> I can't hear whoever's speaking. Do you have a microphone? Seventh finance committee meeting. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. All right, any discussion? Okay, you got it. <laughs> All right, we need to do a roll call vote since we are um, mixed here. So Jim Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. I'll abstain, I was not there. Mark Brennan. Aye. Julie Chalpin abstain, I wasn't there either. So that passes 302. Mm -hmm. um, next item on the agenda is annual meeting schedule. Um, is there discussion? Oh. I know there's discussion. Is is there any decision about changing the date of town meeting away from April 25th to something later? Uh, we talked about that a bit, but um, we're we're supportive of that. Yeah, yeah, we're supportive of that. The problem is you have to. It's like for next year. The only thing that we can do this year, my understanding is we could open the meeting and then continue it. Last time I talked to Casey, she said that she had found out that that wasn't true, that we could just change the date. Oh, really? Without well, that's having to open it. Yeah. That's this was probably two weeks ago that I talked to her um, right before I went out of town. Well, so I, I know meeting. I'm supportive. I'm supportive of putting it off till we have a real budget information. Do you think we, we're going to have real budget information? Well, the they're moving along with the governor's budget. You know, it'll be sometime in April, towards the end of April. I would think they would have House 2 out, and they're going to conference on it. So mid-May or so, I I'm, would anticipate. Um, the problem is just moving it a couple of weeks doesn't do anything. But if we could move it, you know, into June, I think, you know, that would make a big difference. We'd know if we got our waiver approved for the schools, that will have some impact. That that stuff we could, is, is there any th way we can adjust that stuff in the fall or does it really have to be done now? I'm just wondering how much we're gonna say, are we gonna know we're, we're waiting on local receipts or stuff from the state, is that all really? Yeah, usually we don't have the anything final from from the state at this point when we do our budget anyway. We're using the governor's numbers and it usually doesn't change a whole lot. 
I make those adjustments at recap time. Yeah. Okay. So, so if that's what you're worried about, that's what you're waiting for. I wouldn't wait, wait for that. Mm -hmm. I thought we were talking about that it would change the school budgets, but if it's not changing the school budgets, there's, there's no reason to wait for that. Okay. Would we be able to make a change in the fall if we did find out like, hey, we've got $300,000 we didn't know about? Which way? Sure. Yeah. Right, yeah, which way? Out. Good yeah. question. Yeah, that, that isn't going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> we could only wish. The problem is, it I guess it depends on how much we have to cut. Uh, that's my only concern. But I think we could... You know, one strategy that we have been using is putting off some of the capital purchases until the fall. I mean, we've done that before. Okay. Um, I thought maybe we could review the budgets tonight. Casey and I have come up with some suggested cuts to get us to a point where we could actually take on any capital but I wasn't sure that this that was a discussion for tonight, so I did not prepare anything. I wanted to visit with Julie about it first. It's not really on the agenda, so I guess we should move forward with. So here's what I'm worried about is that we did the finance committee meetings. We laid them out. I made the mistaken assumption that annual meeting was going to be delayed. So I don't feel like we have enough finance committee meetings scheduled to get so, what yeah. we need done before annual meeting. Um, so yeah. after, I think after tonight, I'll talk with Brenda um, and we'll look at the schedule and we may ask to add a couple more. So we may have a couple of weeks where we have two finance committee meetings, either that or we drag them out and have them longer, um, one or the other. So, and, uh, and we will figure tough. that out yeah. after yeah. tonight. We if won't. We're happy to, if, if it's easy to move a day, that's, I'm, we're totally on board with whatever you guys need to make it happen. I mean, that's, I mean, if it gives okay. you more time, that's fine. I don't have a issue either way, really. Well, I think people, I think we have to have a good reason to delay town meeting. People expect it to be that date right. and without some yeah. pressing argument other than, I planned poorly and we have to work too hard, you know. But well, we thought we weren't going to fly. We, that's not going to fly, exactly. Right. I think we thought initially that the school budgets wouldn't be complete. Now, can yeah. they change yet? I'm, I'm guessing they still can, right? Or can they? Or yes. they pretty much set? No, well, we have the waiver. We have not been approved for a waiver. So that will should bring us additional money. Um, so the will the ratio change based on that waiver, like between the different towns? Um, That's I don't you're... know. I don't know what, you know, we've only got it, we've only gotten it a couple of years in a row. So I don't, uh, I don't know what happened to the additional money when we got the waivers before. We had applied for the waivers back in December and the other years. So I'm not sure if the formula came through with the waiver to initially. We don't have the waiver now because we just put sent the information in. So um, I don't know what would happen this year. Uh, Chris, I think Chris Nolan just sent in the information. What was it, Trevor? Um, just the other day, right? And Tim? Yeah, yes. he was working on it last week. Yeah. So we haven't, as far as I know, we haven't gotten it because we haven't asked for it. it. I mean, we just asked for it. So the numbers that came out are without the waiver. And that's why I think we had additional expense or some of the stuck costs went up a little bit more than necessary. So Carolyn question, um, the waiver, is that specific to Deerfield because we're decreasing the population of people in 13, in, in one, zip code and also getting rid of some earnings literally, literally what happens is the it's not the people it's the income associated right. with those addresses are literally picked off of our total for the 01373 um, right. zip code that are Waitley's and they're attributed to Waitley so Waitley's might go up uh, because they have a higher income uh, and we 
technically should go down. That's definitely what happens in the 0134 zip code because otherwise we're like up with Wellesley, the 14th wealthiest. So they physically take the um, income associated with all the nonprofit properties and eliminate it from the 01342 zip code wealth factor. And, and so you're left right. with- I just meant that the whatever we get is directed at Deerfield. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, so we're not splitting this waiver with all the other communities. No, no, no. But I don't know what happens to the income that, uh, I mean, I would assume the income then gets attributed to Waitley, but it, it might just go into the Netherlands. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, we can't solve that tonight, so we'll move on. Um, so my takeaway from this little discussion is that we're just going to stick with the April, whatever it is, 24th or 25th. 24th town meeting and just get ourselves get ourselves there so if yeah. we can balance our budget yeah. without if we can balance our budget without devastating cuts then i think it makes sense to just move ahead and we'll make adjustments in the fall but if if the cuts that are necessary to budget, balance the budget are you know we're moving staff then i think we need I to Maybe well, we're not going to solve that tonight. So let's go ahead right. with our budget reviews. Do you want to start with Board of Health since Alex is here? Sure. Um, it's a de decrease because uh, last year. Hang on, let, how about hang on a sec. Let's get the account number. So it's 512-5110? Yes. And that's the Board of Health payroll for 88369 Last year, I came. we came to you and asked for 30 hours for a regular health agent because that was based on Treehouse's um, business model or anticipated business. And they really haven't generated that. And so that's really where the main reduction is. Um, the nurse is the same. Um, a little bit, you know, a little bit extra, but that has really panned out wonderfully. Um, you know, we're to have 12 hours of uh, service from our public health nurse, Cindy Majewski at the senior center. Um, we are participating in two public health excellent grants. That's why I'm not nervous about cutting this budget because uh, the first public health excellent grant goes for seven years it's 292,000 a year plus change. Um, and we split it with Greenfield, Montague, um, Sunderland and us. And it's giving us four part-time public health nurses to do our MAVEN um, disease response, uh, regular public health nurse duties. Um, so Cindy is doing the vo vulnerable population list, the homebound, uh, she's brought that up to date. She keeps it um, current. She's doing home visits and um, checking on people monthly. Um, and she's seeing about 44 people a week on the average between 38 and 44. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of basic stuff. It's like disease, um, you know, like uh, diabetic you know, education, um, medic, um, medicine um, mix-ups, um, just some basic stuff like that. It's not seriously, seriously complicated, but um, older, our older population is having a really hard time getting to primary care. And so this is really making a huge difference, I think, in the quality of life. Um, the second public health excellent grant that we have includes um, Greenfield, Montague, Sunderland, us, and Shrewsbury and Leverett. And that's for uh, 296,000 plus change for 10 years. Um, and that's for a part-time health agent, shared part-time health agent. And, a, you know, we're hopefully, hopefully um, hiring a social worker for things like hoarding. Um, you know, we're trying to get back in emergency preparedness. That's why it's so wonderful. Cindy is keeping our emergency list current. You know, if we have to evacuate like some homebound people, stuff like that. We have our vulnerable population list updated monthly. But also just because COVID is 
you know, it's still here, but we're trying to get back on, um, you know, regular board of health things like hoarding. You go and do a clean out, it's almost guaranteed 100% you're going to get, um, you know, in a couple months, it'll be right back where it is. You, It's a mental health thing you need treat treatment. And so there's different things you can do, but the idea is you work when we're, it's identified by our EMTs or the fire department or the police department, you know, we'll have a social worker, hopefully in the next few months that we'll be able to share. And then we'll do some educational outreach and do incremental um, kind of things with a hoarding situation. It's, hoarding is different than squalor and hoarding is treatable. So say it's an older person like me, the triggers don't work. The trigger for me, my dining room table gets piled up with stuff, paperwork. I, I, you know, you have a holiday. Oh, okay. I got to, you know, either. I think, I think we don't really need to go into hoarding anymore. Um, oh, we but I wanted to show what, what we're doing with the grants. It's very important that we're doing regular public health now. Um, so what's the, um, what's the difference between what the part-time health agent for this grant does and what Alex does? Um, it would be the same thing. It's just that it's back up when Alex is on vacation or is sick or we have additional workload. It's it again, it's just one person to be shared for seven towns, but it it, it will work for us, I think. Both both of these grants are managed by another community. Yes, these are managed by Greenfield. Greenfield is the fiscal <laughs> agent. They are not free. I have to participate in about seven meetings a month, which I do, um, but I'm the one that does the, the commitment. I had a meeting today, as a matter of fact, uh, hour and a half meeting today. And that's the kind of thing that I do to make sure that this money comes into the town. So ignoring Greenfield, but the other smaller towns that are involved in this, do you know if these smaller towns have, in addition to this grant, a nurse and a public health yeah. agent yeah. and a social worker? Yes, you yeah. cannot supplement your regular operation. This is in addition to. Okay. And that's why I say the social worker addressing hoarding issues, um, that kind of thing. It takes a lot of time. Like I said, I was talking about the triggers. I know you don't, you want to move on, but I think it's important you understand that say somebody has a grand kid, child that can't come visit. So let's clean up your kitchen and then the child can come and visit. If you clean up the bathroom and the bedroom, then they can maybe stay overnight. Those are the kind of things that take a lot of hours and that we used to do uh, or I used to do with Dick but we're now having some professionals work with us that obviously would be maybe be more effective. Okay, Jim, you have a question? Yeah, so um, is this grant uh, reflected on the, in revenues or is it? I'm no, no there's no revenues. No, there's, it, okay. Greenfield handles everything. They handle the overhead. They, I mean, so we- So that's it's, in addition to what we're seeing on, on this sheet. At all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, this is just gives us people time and staff time. And I do the one and for the any commitment from the town is followed up by me. And the reason why is because, you know, clearly Casey and poor Brenda have en en enough to do. Okay. Um, go ahead, John. Um, based on the February financials, we're on target for about $71,000. For full year so far, but and and that's with um, applying some of the salaries towards the nature grant. The nature grant covered some of the salaries this year. That really helped us get up and running with Cindy. There was actor. There really wasn't any because of COVID. Um, poor Lisa White handled six, 16 towns as we know before, and she was not able to do our regular hours of stuff. And one of the things that was not done was to keep our emergency vulnerable population list current. And so what Cindy did is she worked with Triad, the police department, all kinds of the Council of Aging, Senior Center. She went through and, and got everybody that anybody knew about and, and visited 
and did some sort of basic assessment if if this was really a homebound person, what were the limitations, so that we know if there was some kind of disaster, like losing electricity, and they had um, a oxygen tank that needed electricity, then we would be able as a town to make sure that that was on the priority list for restoration or that they had some kind of backup available, that kind of thing. This is what the purpose of true public health is, is to make sure that our least able citizens are able to be taken care of. Okay, so the um, what you're at, what you were saying is that we're on track to 71,000, but part of that is being paid for by with the nature grants. So we're gonna end up at something like right, we're stable. That, right? Of, this, this is for Brenda. Hang on. Well, the nature. So, um, Alex, I don't know if you can remember, but the nature grant covered, I want to say, five thousand dollars worth of your salary and maybe thirty of of Cindy's. So that's already been applied to the nature grant. So that's been removed from that line item. Right. And we should be getting the additional, the second 15,000, uh, because I, I think we do anticipate um, that there is going to be an increase um, for services for Cindy uh, at this time. Um, so, um, yeah. That was her extra hours to do the emergency preparedness stuff. Right. And also, you know, a little bit of onboarding and, you know, social networking, you know, with um, the new residents. So. Okay. So the inspector, the alternate agent has increased quite a bit. What what does that change? That's that was um from Dick, that's really Dick's hours and Valerie's hours and Valerie Bird's hours. And uh, the reason why we have those hours at that rate or the amount is because we've had an unusual amount of housing um issues. Hopefully they'll be resolved. We'll know next week, but um, there has been a huge amount of problems in the last few months that we've had to have an alternative agent in use. So do you foresee these problems continuing into 2024? I hope not. Uh, we feel very comfortable that it probably will not, but... It, it, we can't do anything until the housing court is sorted out. It's okay. not anything that I guess I'm not understanding then why are we budgeting for 2024 for something that you think will be resolved sooner? Because we have no guarantee. And we have a certain amount of housing issues anyway. <clears throat> like I said, we're we're trying to supplement it and make sure it's paid for under the grant, but that's no guarantee. Okay, so Alex's hours were at 30 and now they are? 20. 20? And then the alternate agent, that must be? Um, well, there's Dick. He's on um, like 10 hours or something. Nine hours, thousand hours or two. Uh, no, six hours a week. And then we have Valerie on extra. That's just a lump sum for her. <clears throat> okay. And who is Valerie? She does a uh, Valerie house. Bird. She's um she does our really difficult housing court ones. Housing court. Okay. We actually don't have a motion yet. Anybody like to make a motion? Uh, I move that the finance committee recommend the sum $88,369 for the budget for the Board of Health payroll, account number 512-5110. Second. Second. Yep. John beat you to it, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> she can have it. <laughs> nope, I already wrote John down. <laughs> um, any, uh, I'm, I'm still unclear about the, I guess I'm not unclear. The alternate agent was at 9,500 and we've increased it to 19,000. 
but there's a feeling that so initially the alternate agent was just there when um the the regular board of health agent couldn't be but i think what what carolyn is saying is that dick and valerie are feeling a very certain they're um, specific right jobs. okay that that the previous budget didn't account for and and that's actual hours that they would work versus um because I believe we we can use the grant hours, and that's why it's not shown here for if nobody's available or somebody's out sick or on vacation. Just just so you know, this 468 hours is barely covering what Dick is currently doing. It's just, it's about six Dick. hours. A week. Yeah, so I, it's about six I, hours a week. We we are collecting, we're collecting a lot more in fees. None of your housing, we can't, you don't collect anything from housing. And so just spend money. But um, our other fees, um, Alex, I think 46,000 or something. Yeah, I, last time I checked $65 or something like that for uh, FY23, or I'm sorry, FY, yeah. No, what year is, oh, for uh, 2022. But um, I would have to talk with Brenda to get more of what we have it for we, this year currently. We're, we're, we're collections have certainly, have certainly increased quite a bit. Yeah, we're, we're like triple. Yeah, we're under just under 50,000 somewhere around the 50,000. Mm -hmm. But we've, we've been trying to be very conscious of what, what, if we can charge, what are the actual hours that we spent and that we are, the fees reflect that. I'm actually seeing an increase in, uh, you know, food operations as well. And um, so I do anticipate that we're, we're probably gonna have similar figures as well, uh, if not um, a little bit more. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments or discussions? Any thoughts? All right, so it has been moved and seconded for Board of Health payroll 512-5110 at $88,369. Any further discussion or questions? No, okay, we will do roll call. Jim Cambius. Jim Cambius, aye. John Pareski. John Pareski, aye. Allie Vanderbilden. Aye, Allison Vanderbilt. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. That passes five zero zero. Next budget is Board of Health Expense at 512 5400 for 14975 we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion to approve Board of Health Expense Account 512-5400 for 14975 Second. <laughs> sorry, I don't <laughs> want to miss it this time. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think I was too soon. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're in there. Um, so, the okay. basic increase in this is uh, supply line. We had zero supply line last year because we had the NATO. We had... Um, you know, a, a NATO grant that we anticipated to use for supplies. Um, we have to spend the NATO money by um, uh, June 30th. So, and I believe Alex has got like a new thermometer and, you know, test. Not period. yet. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to spend that money down so that we don't have to buy very many supplies, but to have no zero dollars at this point, I, was a little nervous about that because well also for the nurse too for the yeah. public health nurse yeah just just in case we'll try to return as much as that as possible but i wanted to make sure we had something there go ahead john mosquito control that's a district right so this is a stipend to pay the mosquito control district am i right with that Yes, this is our payment. Uh, Do they have a financial statement we can look at? Uh, we don't even have a superintendent at the moment, John. I am a I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I am a commissioner, 
and we're not even a superintendent at the moment. So no, we do not have a financial statement. We generate about 98,000 in fees and we pay $60,000 out to a superintendent contractor. We are going to have a, to buy insurance. This, you know, we're are in the process of hiring actually a really good qualified person, but we will have to buy insurance. And um, last year we got an earmark of over a hundred thousand dollars from Joe Comerford. So we're hoping to get another earmark because as a startup district, we need to cover our expenses, obviously, because we don't have a lot of money in the bank. And um, so we're still charging the same to um, be a member town. And that allows us to do surveillance, which is, we do no um, lava siding and we do no adult siding. We're just strictly um, surveillance. We do trapping and we do testing. Um, we do, it starts just before Memorial Day and it goes, we're trying to get the state lab to continue testing until um, mid-October um, Indigenous Persons Day because of climate change. They have been shutting down the first uh, week of October, um, but we do continue trapping until mid-October just to see the numbers um, of the 52 species of mosquitoes, we're only really concerned about five and having the volume or the number of mosquitoes in those five species is very important as, as well as finding the disease load, which is what this um, testing does. Okay. All right. um, thanks. I, I did just pay the bill and it went to the state reclamation board, Department of Agriculture, so. Oh, okay. That, the, yeah, it's it's an actual was, invoice that fifty five hundred dollars. It was uh, I but, think uh, it was five thousand. It was five thousand. Thanks, Brenda. Five thousand to the state. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't. We don't actually handle the money, John. This is why the mosquito is hard to run a mosquito district from scratch. Okay. Um, that's good. Is, that's good. Are there any other questions or comments? No, it has been moved and seconded for Board of Health expense at $14,975. Any last minute questions? No, Board, uh, what do you recall this? Roll call vote. Jim Cambius? James Cambius, aye. John Paresky? John Paresky, aye. Ali Vandervelden? Aye. Mark Brennan? Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 500. Next. Okay. Great. Should we go back to uh, Select Board staff salaries? Sure. And start, is that, that start it for Board of Health? That's it for Board of Health. All right. Thanks, right. Alex. I can't think of another one for Board of Health. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what okay. do we want? Select Board staff salaries. It's, uh, oh, 122-5110. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Do we have a... Um, Motion. I'll make them to get it on the table. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, to vote on select board staff salaries account 122-5110 for $339,584. All right. We have a second. Second. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to speak to this, Trevor? You want me to or? Well, I'll start, I guess, a little bit. Um, okay. You know, we've been, we've had this position on various budgets, I think, since I started, maybe. We keep cutting it back out every time because we don't have the money, um, which is the planner position. I mean, generally, if you pull the 61000 out of it, there is some additional money for uh, part-time admin help because we're just buried in that office. Um, but, you know, the majority of this, of this increase is the 63000 for the planner, um, you know, and coordinator for, for grants. And, you know, this town would be smart to invest in a planner. We have so many different projects going on and I feel like there's, there's not one person kind of with the knowledge of planning and coordinating, you know, municipal projects and, and all the things that we're trying to do in town. There's no, not one person kind of doing that multiple great volunteers and staff working on all the different things that we're doing and um and i think we're doing an okay job but we're not doing a great job of kind of getting this stuff 
figured out in a consistent plan for our what are we doing going forward how do we get the the common done and tie it in with all the sidewalk stuff it's like it's so much work that gets added to staff who don't have the time and you know and select board members who don't have the qualifications to to kind of do this work and i just think it's um you know it's important to get moving on having a planner for Deerfield with all that we have coming up and want to do. Um, but then again, the other items, are, oh, go ahead. Um, I just want to point out that the contracted services budget had 25,000 for a grant MVP consultant last in 2023 and $10,000 for planning. Plus there was another 10,000 that we voted at fall town meeting. So um, you're talking $45,000 to pay consultants versus 64000 to pay somebody who's on the payroll and can address uh, the town of Deerfield's needs uh, more directly. So there's still 10,000 uncontracted services for that yep. MVP. So that's right. Yeah. So it'd be like 35. Well. Yep. That's true. Total coming from here. So half that's of true. It. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, that, I mean, that's in a nutshell. Again, it, it gets on every year or so, and, and we're like, we really need this, and we talk about it all year, and then we get the budget, and we're like, we have no money <laughs> to do. So, I don't know. We think it's important um, to really take this step and see what the public says about it, and and again, find other ways, if we can, to try and save money. I think it would save us in the long run, but in just, you know, people's sanity in, in all these different positions, but... I um, want to make a comment. Go ahead, John, you're first. Uh, I just question whether we need somebody full time. And, never had the position before. And, Maybe we should just make and, a small bite to start with and have it part time. And then if they need more time. It, Casey, Casey and I have, have discussed that. that in regards to reducing the budget so that we can fit in some capital. Um, and she had suggested that maybe this could be a 30 hour week position position um there were some also, also some other concessions small ones but um i'm not sure that they're worth noting at this moment but even you know sixty three thousand sounds like a lot of money but for for a well-qualified planner even at 30 hours a week i don't know i mean, i don't know what we'll get uh, i don't know what the marketplace is so right. i would be okay. guessing to say whether that would fund it or not, or, or could we only use half of that if somebody would pick up a part-time job if they're working in other towns? I, I would do that route in a minute too, well, just to roll it out. And and I would hope that this person could manage some of the grants for yeah. Casey so that she's not so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if I could just add a thought before I have to sign off. Um, <laughs> one of the things that as a newest member here, I just spent the better part of 10 days writing earmark requests, spending probably eight hours a day. Um, so probably I'm not as efficient because I don't know how to do this, but um, if we had a planner, grant writer, administrator, which is what I think the position should be, that person would be aware of grants early in the process so that they can get the grants written properly and get the applications in, in a well-prepared form. They can take care of the uh, ten-year um, town uh, town plan that we don't we haven't had for twenty years. They can administer the grants, and um, they can work with the planning board to provide support services. So um, it's a multifaceted thing. It might be hard to find somebody to do all these things, but um, I would say if we're going to try this, that what we ought to do is maybe do a one-year contract and then make a decision at the end of the contract. <laughs> Um, that might be an option. Right. But anyway, thanks for all your consideration. And good luck with the rest yeah. of the meeting. Thanks, Tim. The one, thanks, thing, Tim. the one thing I would just add from, from the, our time at MMA and listening to the senators and the governor speak, they were all about make sure you have somebody ready to go and go get this money from the federal government. And we just don't. We don't have that ca capacity. So this would help with that. I think I think there's a lot of funds out there to get. We just want to be in the position this year to be able to get it if we can. Jim? Would it be possible to make this a position shared with one of the neighboring towns? 
I'm sure they would all jump in if they could, for sure. I mean, I whether they have the funds too as well. But Annalie, oh, Annalie. I don't know if you want to. Annalie, go ahead. Um, yes, I've uh, Casey and I both have talked. Casey's talked recently with Sunderland. Um, I've talked with a number of the other towns, and they either have their own planners or they are not interested. Hmm. Okay. No surprise. But and all of them, I mean, it's been really remarkable the degree to which when I talk to them, they say, oh my gosh, Deerfield doesn't have a planner. You guys do too much. How can you manage without a planner? Um, and, you know, everyone has spoken very eloquently. Uh, yeah. Uh, we could do, you know, we can follow up on so much more. There's so much that's falling through the cracks now for no one's fault. They're just, everyone, as you well know, I mean, they're just working to their nth degree and yeah mark we do, we do get great we do get grants it's just yeah you know. mark mark's up mark you have a question yeah i i just i'm reluctant to jump right into a full-time position for this i think that we should explore either finding some sort of agency that might be able to do this i know uh I, i'm not as familiar with uh finding grants at the municipal level but i i know you know i i do have experience doing it um just in, in the in, in the corporate sphere and you know finding a agency that might be able to do it for municipal stuff might be uh, worth looking into if we haven't done it already and uh, if not maybe finding finding someone that can do it part-time or on a contract basis before we start hiring another full-time position uh, only to regret it later um so that's my opinion on this go ahead Trevor. again I'll just say this doesn't state that it's a full-time position, I don't think, does it? Or did they give us hours? It, but yeah, it has oh, hours to the eight. I, I'm not eight. so sure it is a full-time either. And I think my question is we should put a, a dollar figure in. And, and again, I don't know how expensive planners are. I'm not sure how we came up with that number if we just kind of stuck it in a schedule. And um, I, I believe Casey thought it belonged in in, a, e, in, in grade in e, e. So one. we thought she she said, let's do grade E step one just to get it on there. Yeah, I do, I, I don't know if we get somebody full time at that rate for a planner to do all of that work. But I don't know, but I agree it, it could be I yeah. should be part time. To I almost feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It goes against the grain because it, it, I mean we're up against the we, we don't have any money and this is going to be very hard to fund. But sure. I feel like it needs to be a full time position for the first year, and maybe the comment of a one year contract with a full time position because I think it's going to take some time to come up to speed on everything going on with all these different committees mm -hmm. and there's there's so much and there's so much like everybody's doing little pieces of it and if this person's going to take that over from people mm -hmm. i don't know but i don't know how Six we minds never go away that's the problem yeah well, and it's not just sixty five thousand dollars because right. there's going to be benefits and mm -hmm. opeb and whatever whatever should we move that then i know we talked about con should we move it to contracted services for the first year and then that then it's not a benefit position or then like you said you would do a contract i, don't I think know. it would be more expensive if you would it, it be that way. okay but, I, uh, I that's my my thought yeah, on it but I'll take your advice yeah but the risk goes away if we do contract to hire right if if we find out that it just they're just simply not enough work for that person Oh. <laughs> or if I, after I don't a think year we can drop it back to 30 hours or yeah, something. Yeah, there is so much work. I mean, even working with the planning boards and all the stuff that they work with. And uh, I just. There needs to be some kind two. of direction. Um, and I would hope this kind mm -hmm. of person would give the town some direction. What, what if we hired somebody part time, have, say, 30 hours, whatever? And then we find out they need more. Can you come back to use reserve funds or something to I add to it? I That's the question. Can sure. we do that? Is or you could okay? vote it at fall or town meeting to use free cash mm -hmm. or whatever. But yeah. It may change. So that's doable then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, there may be people though that are only interested in doing it full time. Well, that's I'm right. wondering what the market is. I have no idea. Like, yeah. Maybe they would love that part time. You know what I mean? Something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, it makes sense. It's just, you know, it's it's a it's so much of an unknown. I, 
I, I, I wouldn't be comfortable committing right away, just going from no planner to boom, full-time planner. Yes, and I also note that we're also considerably increasing the part-time administrative support. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're adding a... Um, that that was actually in, uh, increased at fall town meeting. Right. So this is just a continuation of that. And we're yep. adding, I can't remember which account it's under, we're adding a, a assistant, another administrative assistant in the town, in the town clerk. It no, was a uh, treasurer collector. No, we're moving her from assistant okay. treasurer collector to uh, to the assistant I, town clerk position. I think you're talking about the help to, right. to Brenda. So we're adding, what, three positions in a year when we're looking for cuts? Well, I don't know if we're looking for cuts, but we're we're looking to get well, our staff. Well, either that or do no one. Um, right. No capital no at capital. all. I think exactly. we're looking for cuts. Or we borrow for capital. <laughs> Yeah. Driving towards his pop two and a half override. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> I know. It's rough. It is. I don't know. There's just so much to do. Never know. I move to amend the motion to reduce it by the sum of uh, 30000 with the recommendation that the planning an EV coordinator be a half-time position. A second that. Can someone repeat that amendment in a microphone? I'm sorry. I moved that we reduce the um, budget by 30,000 with the recommendation that the planning slash ED coordinator be a part-time position. At 20 hours? Yeah. We can do the act. We can do the actual specific numbers. The, can I just say the problem is with twenty hours, you're still eligible for benefits. We should say nineteen hours, or you, know, you won't get anybody to come here for don't no bother. benefits. If you're not going to do it full time. Don't bother, or put it under contracted services again. How do you know? Because we're back to this year after year after year, John. Every time we turn around, we're, so we say we need this every year. And well, then we I, keep think I agree it's needed. I think, I, speaking for the rest of us, I think yeah. we agree it's needed. Right. Just, and it would be nice to have a person to that was with. integrated with our staff, not somebody we just go to when we need a right. Need a thing. Yeah. My concern with that. Um, amendment is with regards to the salary that that position may command and especially in the current environment with all I think a lot of towns are in similar position I guess I don't really know what the other towns are doing but um if we cut that item in half that may add up to less than half of the hours attached to it Are you saying if we can't get somebody for the this level and step grade and step? Right, or or right that exactly. Um, it might just really limit. I, I, yeah. So we have you may have that value there. and still need to do it part time. Um, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Um, so when Casey and I were looking at budgets and trying to make some cuts, um, we did talk about cutting out my assistant. If we need to, I understand. Um, but uh, one of the things we talked about was maybe cutting Alex back to 15 hours, the additional part-time assistant. Um, we had put in 20 hours of overtime, but we could reduce that to 15. So I'm, and, and if we made the planner ED coordinator a 30 hour position, I'm just adding up the numbers here. I can tell you what the difference is. Those were the cuts that we were looking at to try to help the budget. Can I speak about that? Go ahead. I am against taking that, your assistant away. Well, I feel very strongly about that. I, I, I actually, I actually have a thought about that in regards to the assistant town clerk. No assistant accountant. Right. But in, 
the assistant town clerk, once we get a town clerk in here, I believe the assistant town clerk might have some extra time on her hands. Jen and I were talking about that before she left. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing, guaranteeing that she will, but if we need to find room in the budget, I'm willing to try that and see if it's a doable solution. Um, because maybe that person would have eight hours a week to help me, not, not during elections, not during town meeting time, not right. during uh, census time, that kind of stuff. But and so I, I can, I can work around that. Maybe, I don't know. It's just a thought. I just, I just totally Help against level. you putting together notebooks <laughs> when you said that. It's just, yeah, I know. That's not right. <laughs> So, um, so with those changes, if we made the planner a 30 hour a week position, we reduced um, Alex's position to 15 hours a week, and we reduced the overtime for Pat to 15, that would bring us down to 317,956. That would be a reduction of 21,628. It's not huge, but I mean, it's not as much as 30. That's Alex is but done those here. are some things that Casey and I had talked about. If she had been here, maybe she would have would have discussed that tonight. Mm. Oh, the other Alex, not Alex White. Right. right. No, right. no, Alex, Hirsch Alex Hirsch 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got I it. Mean, if we have if we have an actual planner in here, maybe, maybe those hours for him won't be as necessary. Right now he's mostly doing minutes and helping with meetings, right? Yeah. And occasionally he comes in and helps Sarah, which goes into the treasurer collector's budget. Are there any leads on hiring? Uh, um... We we had three candidates that we were interested in, and I think there've been some new applications that have come in. Sarah started looking at them today. So um, we, I know we need to get moving on that. I'm, I'm less worried about the, 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 the cost short-term for FY24 and more just the long-term cost. So, I, I don't know if, if, you know, I would want to slash it down to a part-time. It's just, for me, having a contracted position for the first year, I think, would, would be a, something I, I think would be an easier pill to swallow. And then if we want to convert them to full-time, then, then go from there. So is there a way, uh, um, a mechanism to do that, where you hire somebody as a contractor who's actually your person who's part of the town Does that for a year? I, yeah. I, I would assume, it, I don't know, Carolyn, you might know better or Trevor, but um, an interim, just like we did with the town clerk. Can you, you, have do to, you have to list it as like an interim or some kind of temporary something, because if the person consistently works over 20 hours a week, you got to add benefits. And I mean, you can't, you know, do it that way. But that doesn't mean we can't try to come up with some kind of, you know, I mean, we just have to figure out how we can do well, it. Well, an interim person could be full-time mm -hmm. or part. I mean, it, I don't think that matters. I think with the, with the town clerk, she was definitely under 20. So we didn't have the benefit issue. Right. It just, you just have to be careful that we don't um, get into labor. Right. Models. Right. You know, and and that's and that's all the time. Hire, to hire somebody that the same person would stay on, not be an interim person. I think you'd have to go out and post again because you, anytime yes. you hear somebody, you've got to make sure that's right. equal opportunity. Yes. Like We'd have to repost, but that doesn't mean we can't. You know that we would have to repost on a, you know, wide scale. You could repost out in the lobby, and you could repost in the Greenfield Recorder, and that you know, then move on. If you like the person, if you didn't, if you wanted to switch the person and it just wasn't working out, then we could advertise wherever. But um, there are ways you can, if, if we if we did like the person, you can convert them. I'd be much more comfortable to add another person doing it that way. We just have to be creative. We'd, we'd have to. Go ahead, John. Has the personnel board review this position if they need to do they have to yes and what was their take on it i don't think they've 
I mean, we did at one point, right? We got it all the way through personnel and then we pulled it. At, that was, that was the last time we've done this. The finance committee squashed it. Is that what it was? Uh -huh. we, we haven't. We're we haven't. back here again. No. <laughs> when? No, it was uh, when Kip was here because Kip really pushed for a planner at the time. Uh, and then it just, it just. That was before. I, was I want to say that was about five years ago. Yeah. So was. there's a position description and everything that's gone through personnel I already. Think we did a while ago. Uh, we'd have to look that back up again and just, and probably yeah. run it through them again. And it might be different now that we're looking at different things. And Casey's here now and she has some other input on. Right. You know what you guys have come up with. I just think we need to find the money to get it done. Um, it, it, like if if it's for a year or whatever. But can I call the motion? So yeah, we have a was, motion on the table to reduce the budget by to amend to amend the budget. budget. Yeah. Right. Right. To reduce what what I I didn't write down to take what out of thirty thousand. I was recommending reducing it by thirty thousand. So you're taking it to three oh nine five eighty four. Right, and that would be um, thirty three thousand nine thirty five. The line position. Could be a or of they that. could shift it around where they reduce increase that a little bit and reduce the admin support and whatever. Right. Right within that um the number that Brenda had proposed was 317,956. so that's what eight thousand more than eight and a little bit more um so let's go ahead and vote the motion to amend um from 339,584 to 309,584 are there any any further discussion on that motion I just, I would just like that reiterated one more time. I'm following along okay. at home. So we had an original motion that was for 339,584, which is the amount on the sheet in front of us. What we're voting is a motion to amend that motion with a new dollar value of 309,584. So it's $30,000 less um, on the bottom line. Okay, so that's the original amendment and right. So that's what we're voting right now is to amend the okay. value from 339 to 309. That just amends the motion. And then we would have a second vote. Should that pass, we would have a second vote, well, regardless, um, on whether or not to recommend this item. Right, exactly. Okay. We would so, we may still hang on to that number, and at that point, when we get to right. town meeting, it might be different. But so, what we're, we're voting right now is to change three thirty nine five eighty four to three zero nine five eighty four. There, okay, and that was the original proposal. I guess I, I was just wondering if there was. Brenda had suggested a a different reduction, right. and that sounds like the consensus is more or less to dismiss that and go with the original reduction. No. Um, so we have, since we have a motion on the floor, we need to vote that motion. There could be Correct. another motion at that to, to change the 309 to 317 or whatever, but we need to vote the 309 value that has been proposed. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion to change this to 309-584? No, we'll do a roll call vote. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, aye. John Presky. Aye. John Presky, aye. Allison Vanderbilden. No. Mark Brennan. No. Mark, yeah. Julie Chalfant, no. The vote on that is two, three, three, zero. Um, so the amendment does not pass. Um, so we're back to our original motion which was the 339 584 um we could have a motion to change to the value that brenda said if anybody wants to make that motion all right i'll make that a was a reduction of like twenty one thousand or something um yeah i think it was should... 21 21 628 so it would have been to reduce it to 317 956 so i'll make a motion that we amend the whatever the heck, the motion to 317,956. Is there a second? 
I'll second that. All right. Three one seven nine five six. Three one seven nine five six. And that would be reducing the part time admin support from twenty hours to fifteen hours. No, mm -hmm. reducing. Yeah, fifteen hours a week. Um, and then changing overtime to fifteen hours to total. fifteen hours instead of twenty total. And then changing the new position from 40 hours to 30 hours at this. Right. So it'd be 50, 1,560 hours. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? All right. Roll call vote. Wait, actually, I, I did have one question. Yeah, so, go ahead. Go um, ahead. Do, does does this committee have the the ability to make a recommendation with the in, intent to have this be an interim position for this uh, planner? I, you can make the motion on, think, you know, discuss it on town meeting floor, what your intent is for the budget um, or what, you know, what your intent is behind the 309 or whatever it might be. Um, so if it's Brenda, that that's a, question for you I think if it's on this line item then it's a salary of a town employee it's listed as a salary of an employee of a town employee but uh, if you had a special contract and it was close to that dollar amount for the same hours so we I'm could sure fund a contract it's, under this line item yeah this is just we the budget so we're budgeting in. to have somebody at about that that rate Great. for that many hours mm -hmm. really okay okay so we could make it's not our um here's what i think <laughs> i'll say this and then everybody can disagree with me um i i don't think it's within our purview mm -hmm. to mandate that because mm -hmm. that's not under our area of responsibility yeah. but i certainly think we could make that recommendation and even vote that recommendation that that be passed to um casey i assume who who would be the the hiring authority for that person um so i think it would be sort of like a non-binding resolution from town meeting only it's a recommendation from finance committee okay. i think everything you do is a recommendation yeah pretty much so but like I, I don't think like if we voted it and they didn't do it, kind of like there's nothing we can do about it, right? <laughs> it's like we don't have any authority to. Bust I have it. a thought on that. I, yeah, I, but I can never tell if I'm interrupting from Zoom. Go ahead. Um, uh, if we if this position is in the budget and we hire for this position, um, whatever many however many hours, <clears throat> and then next year we decide we don't want this position, or next year we have to make cuts that that's called layoffs and that's a thing that could happen and i think in that situation we would look at all the positions we might want to cut and it might not be the planner it might be somebody deemed less critical depending on how it worked out so i think it's sort of arbitrary semantics if it's interim or not i do think any applicants for this position if they watch these meetings or read the minutes might you know sort of come into it wondering how long term the position will be um so just sort of a consideration. That's why I think it's really important on how we, um, you know, describe the, you know, describe the position and how creative we can be um, so that we have maximum flexibility. I, um, it's, it's hard to just, you know, in tonight, I, I, cause I'm not sure then I would, I understand we could, we want to cut our expenses or keep our expenses as low as possible, but I also want to make sure that we actually hire someone that can be effective and that, you know, those hours would generate the kind of cash that we are hoping to. I mean, if if they could write an earmark instead of Tim and we get four million dollars, then it's definitely kind of worth it. But, you know, if we're just handling public health, you know, grants and regular stuff like that you can get bogged down and we're not really getting all that much ahead. Yes, we have a few hours of this and a few hours of that, but that's not necessarily impactful. 
So I think we have to think about it and be really creative. But I understand what your intentions are. And I think we need to discuss it some more and get some help. All right, so we have a motion and second on the floor to amend this bottom line dollar value to 317956. Any further discussion on that motion? Um, can I just ask one more? I, I'm i getting the feeling that there isn't really like a lot of pushback. I mean, there's it, it, this is a cut. It's a meaningful cut, but um, it seems like something people can live with, but I can't see most people's facial expressions. I can't see Brenda's. And um, if so if somebody would mind translating that, like as if I'm a robot, is that sort of what it feels like? These, this is a change that we could live with and the discussion is primarily about this. Um, like those those overtime hours and Alex's hours, so like that, that seems those are built in there. That seems that seems doable. Um, and then the discussion is really about are we are we cutting the budget for this plan or position or not? And that you know I guess the finance committee is talking about whether that's a uh, uh, um, good compromise or not. I don't know if if there isn't a consensus, that's okay too. I'm just. I'm just having trouble reading like what the, what the vibe well, is. So, so this, these were suggested cuts from Casey as her and I were discussing the need to reduce the budget to be able to afford any capital. And um, we have never had um, overtime budgeted for in the past, but we felt with the amount of workload that sometimes that would have been nice to have. So the reason that's the reason why the overtime was added in the first place. So we might not ever use it. And we probably won't even use five hours, 10 hours maybe, but we thought we'd put a little bit in there to allow that flexibility. Um, with Alex, um, his position was brought up to 19 hours a week, but you know, he really isn't working 19 hours a week in this position right now, but maybe he isn't doing the things that Casey had hoped he'd do either, but she seems satisfied that Alex or whoever's in that position, um, would still handle the town meeting, uh, these meetings and, um, uh, do minutes for the select board. Um, and in regards to the planner, you know, I know that the discussion was already said many times tonight that you know we really don't know how much work that person yeah. will have. We suspect that it's going to be a full-time position, but if it started out as a part-time position, would that be so bad? I don't know. So yeah, okay. All right. So the yeah, so the big mystery there, the big question mark is on that planner and whether we could find somebody for that many hours and whether they would be able to do anything meaningful in that amount of time. Um, and if they weren't, I guess we, yeah. Uh, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other discussion on the proposed amendment? No, we'll do a roll call vote. James Cambius. Hey. John Pereski. Hi. Allison Vandervelden. Hi. Mark Brennan. Yes, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes, the amendment passes four, one, zero. Is um, Trevor um, there? Because the select board should vote on this amended amount too. I oh, I, I think he took a phone call, Carolyn. Trevor's, yeah, Trevor took a phone call and is out. All right, well, we can just, we can talk about it and vote it next week. That's fine. I'm fine with that. You'll remember? Yeah, okay. I wrote notes down here. Okay, great. All right, so should um, we, oh. No, we, we haven't voted this article yet. So it is now, we now have an amended oh. article, <laughs> select board staff salaries at 317,956. Any further discussion on the article? Can I, uh, just to make sure I have the right notes, Julie, it's reducing Alex's, or, you know, the assistant to 15 hours and reducing the overtime, right? Could you, could you specify what those positions are rather than just using people's first names? <laughs> What's that? Could you specify the title of the positions rather than just people's first names? I, I can, yes, absolutely. So so the 
position that I was referring to that Alex is currently in is the part-time admin support. Okay. Is that the one that you needed? And then and the, the, the overtime would have been for, um, for the admin assistant. To the select board? Right. Yeah. Who is a, a currently a full-time position. That's right. If we have more like, you know, four nights in a row of meetings where the, they have to, you know, do these meetings kind of thing, Jim. No, I just, I just saying, you know, Alex or whoever is. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, I, sorry. I, needed, yeah. I needed to have yeah. these notes for the, okay. for us. Any further discussion on this item? No. Okay. It has been moved and seconded for select board staff salaries at Three hundred seventeen thousand nine hundred and fifty-six. Roll call vote: James Cambius, aye. John Pareski, aye. Allison Vandervelden, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes four zero zero. Scribbled all over that page. Yay. Sorry, um, that, that pass. What was the pass? Four zero zero. Mark has had to leave, oh, so we're down to four people, me. but we do still have a quorum. Okay. Um, and the select board will vote on that next week, Brenda. Great. You know, next Wednesday. Okay. Okay. What's next? So, select board and administrative expense at one twenty two dash fifty four hundred. Do we have a motion? I move that the we finance committee recommend the sum of twelve thousand two hundred and fifty for a select board and administrator expense. We have a second. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Um, Carolyn. Yes. I am a little concerned about this budget because you're over on your budget already. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, we we were trying to keep it as low as possible, but I agree. Yeah, but you had, you had an awful lot of people that went to MMA this year, including Denise Mason, um, that came out of this budget. So I, I just want, I just wanted to make sure that this is what you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, or need. Yeah. Well, why don't we put this? I, I'm, I'm the only one here. So why don't we? put this off for next week and then we'll bring it back up. Julie, is that okay with you? That's fine with me. Would you like to withdraw your motion? I withdraw the motion. Yeah, John, I'm sorry about that, but Brenda's right. It should be reviewed more realistically. Yes. Can we get a detail of what's been spent so far by approximately these line items for the next vote? Sure. Mm -hmm. is, that, mm -hmm. is that a lot of work for you? No, absolutely not. We had a couple of years, because of COVID, we had a couple of years where there was no expenses to go into the MMA. Right, exactly. Or last year, I think it was online. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a disaster online. Um, okay, next. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't have the list in front of me, so... Um, Accountant expense. Once Legal it. expense, right? Would you be the next one? And that's 151 5300. Accountant expense, no. Uh, we're just doing select board. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yep. Select board budgets at the moment, or ones that, that Casey helped um, put together, Casey and the select board. Um, so 151 5300, and that is 96,000. All right, do we have a motion? Wow. Yeah. We're involved in a lot of lawsuits. Wow. Nothing we can do. I can make the motion to recommend that one. Um, except I actually don't have it in front of me, so maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> it's in your pile, Allie. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, it was a, well, I don't want to try to remember the number, but um, I might have a question about it once we start. One fifty one fifty three hundred at ninety six thousand dollars. Yeah, that's what you're recommending. Three yes. Second. second. All right. Discussion. Can somebody who has it in front of them just summarize the uh, change 
um, from last year. Yeah. I so, biggest, well, I was just going to say the biggest change I think is from our, um, we had a labor contract with the highway department that was very extended. We had the police contract renewal and then we have several lawsuits. So, and, and can, so we, we, can we just start with the, with the figures? Yep. So 25,000 is being budgeted for litigation. 66,000 is the contract that we have with um, town council and then 5,000 for labor. So last year, so the 66,000 for the contract is the same as last year, right? The labor council at 5,000 is down from 5,500. So it's not a big change, but the litigation line item was 4,000 last year and is 25,000 this year. And I think that's what I thought you were going to say. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I, I think we've already spent, what have we spent over 30,000 on, on uh, the litigation? I can't remember for sure, but um, we've had a lot of litigation this year and it's not going to go away uh, at the end of the year, I don't think. Um, I do not believe so. And there's a new, you said a new lawsuit beyond the town park business that's been a problem. Well, um, I don't even you know, know, know what it is, is if it's something I private. But there's, there's, there's always new lawsuits. <laughs> Steam Mill, Steam Mill um, Road is is ongoing, Julie. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot about that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the road. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go. Yeah. So this is a, a informational question only, but um, when was that decision taken about Steam Mill Road? What do you mean taken? Taken. I mean, I don't know if there was happen? a decision made. Was there? What was oh, that? I mean, making Steam Mill Road a private road. When when did that happen? Uh, I don't know if we want to discuss that in the public meeting, but I can tell you it happened. Um, we took the decision maybe a year and a half ago or so. That's all I need to know. Yeah, I think it was about a year and a half. I, I could get you the date for was sure. That the select board or what? yes, select board. Okay. I just didn't know who it. Yeah. Yep. There was a request uh, from us, and yeah, so we took a right. decision and. Yeah. The first I heard of it was encountering somebody walking on Steam Mill Road. Oh, <laughs> I see. Well, it's a little bit. Nice any um, discussion on the legal expense item? Any questions? Anybody? <clears throat> it's like we're proving it's okay to have lawsuits. Yeah. Well, we could repair them and defend it. ourselves yeah, against them, but, but are there okay. actions that are being taken that? John, uh, the the continuing of the steam mill road is at least $20 million. So it's kind of, we don't really have a choice. And it could even be more than 20 million actually by the time we get done. So. Okay. It's worth defending against. Um, from what you were saying, it sounds like this is a low ball figure anyway. I, I would hope the worst of the litigation is is coming to a close. We'll and and I think one. and I think yeah. that's why the budget was set as it was, because some of it will continue, but Hopefully we're on the downhill slide of it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I don't know enough to you know to really Did say you for expect sure. that we'll see a um a transfer request for this you will year? yes yes we had um, EverSource um, join the our litigants and then um, we had DCR join our side so it's. Oh. It's getting more drawn drawn out. Well, I don't think we have any contract negotiations in the next no. year or two, right? No, yeah. but there's always um, a few. Yeah, some if you have a case employee issues here yep. and there that that are covered, which is why the five thousand is left in there. Okay. Anybody else? Anything we can do about it? No. 
and you can't make people stop seeing the pen. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> so any further discussion? Questions. So it's moved and seconded for legal expense at $96,000. We'll do a roll call vote. James Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. Um, I'm going to abstain. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes 301. Next. Uh, let's just go to the next page, which would be personnel board. So that's easy. I'll make a motion to approve personnel board one fifty count one fifty two fifty four hundred for seven hundred fifty dollars. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? This is for dues and conferences and training. No questions. All right. Roll call vote. James Cambias. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye, that passes four zero zero. We went too fast. We surprised you. <laughs> yeah. Next. I can unmute myself fast enough. <laughs> yeah. IT hardware 155 5400. I'll make a motion to approve the budget for IT hardware account 155 5400 for $5,000. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Does this never change? It was the same last year. It's been the same for since 2021. Oh, that's right. 2020 looks like it was a little different. Okay. Why doesn't it ever change? Yeah, well, some years we overspend it and some years we underspend it. Uh, just depends on mm -hmm. what's happening. Whose computer? Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So with all these new people, are we going to be buying new computers? No, oh, good point. I would think so. Oh, probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've actually gotten some over from COVID for people to do We do have new. laptops. Yeah, we have laptops. Okay. Any discussion? No. All right. Um, roll call vote. James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. John Pareski. John Pareski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 400. Okay. So um, contracted services. We're not doing peg access? Uh, okay. We could. That's a miscellaneous budget. Do you nope. want to just get it done and over with? Let's do it. It's there. Okay. I'd like it. Uh, peg access is 155 5800. It's 4,000. It's been 4,000 for five years. Yeah, it's, it's it. set by the contract. It's the amount. Fiscal 24 is the amount that's budgeted from the amount we received in fiscal 23. So it's it's uh, specifically targeted for capital for PEG access. Make a motion to recommend um, 155, 5800 at 4,000. Second. Did somebody unpack the PEG access for the first That's the um, um, FCAT kind of, right? It's the, it's the money for um, um, public. public Education. Yeah. Public education grant. Government. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? No. James Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes four zero zero. That's that's what they say, yes. Thing. Public education and government. Yes. Okay. And or in? No, it's and. It's and. you have a public channel, you have an educational channel, you have a government channel. Uh, yeah. So contracted services is one fifty nine dash fifty four ten for two hundred and sixty thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion so we can discuss contracted services to approve the budget of count 159-5410 for $260,375. Do have a second. Second. Okay. So we pulled all the planning out, but that's only 35,000. What's the other 35? Um, 
training and professional development has gone up. I believe Casey indicated that the price of that has just gone up quite a bit. Um, not a lot else that's changed here other than uh, the permitting software. So if in fact the permitting software is purchased and I understand it. Oh, I see what it is. It, it's on the capital request. Um, it would save a lot in, in staff hours uh, from what my understanding of it is, brings us into the 21st century. But if, if we were to purchase that software, this would be the annual maintenance fee for it. So we felt like it belonged in contracted services. So last year we transferred from free cash 60,000. Right. What was that? For? So 10,000 was for additional planning services and 50,000 was for possibly the engineer for the Leary lot. Oh, for the Leary lot. Right. But I found out yesterday that mm -hmm. the way we are using our ARPA funds, we are not subject to the federal procurement laws. So I don't think they're going to spend that out of here, but I, I could be wrong. Okay. Shouldn't that be capital? The engineering services for Leary Lot? We discussed that last yeah, we year. Did. So that's, that's yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so that's not on this budget. I'm just trying to figure out what the change is. So it's actually... Oh, gosh. I hate this stock. So... <laughs> Why so if we take that 50,000, that's 50 out of the 71. So that leaves 21. And then we took 35 Where did we come to out. So this is a 14,000 increase for the line items that are still here, right? Yeah, did the, I do that the right? um, financial software goes up 5% every year. That's a, a, a given. Um, and then there's some slight increases in some other things. Um, Civic Plus has just only gone up 500 bucks. But I know with um, IT services, um, Casey was anticipating that to be 33,000. We're looking at switching. Didn't know if I should say that out loud. Why not? Okay. <laughs> so this is like a six percent, five point six percent increase, five point seven percent increase on the line items that are left in here. But it's kind of there. There's no new services. Go no. ahead, John. I'm sorry. I'm just a little moving. Okay. Um, I'm not other than the permitting. The 10000 for the grant slash MVP consultant. Why not move that over to... The... Good, good question. Could we eliminate using Chris Curtis if we were to have a planner? Is that who that's Chris Curtis? Is that who that, yeah. that is? Mm -hmm. yeah. To utilize the MVP program, you have to have an MVP certified... Um, planner and Chris or you know his group or him him is a MVP certified planner. What's MVP? Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness um, Grant. Um, that's the one we got the culvert from Mill Village, the culvert for Kelleher Drive. Um, you can't um, you can't hire someone off the street um, and then just have them write a vulnerability grant. It has to be, the state has you jump through the hoops. You have to be certified by them first. So there would be a transition year. I'm not saying that the person couldn't get transferred. I mean, couldn't get certified, but you unlikely that you would be able to hire someone that's certified. Very few people are certified. Mostly your um, planning agencies have certified staff one person at least certified, like Berkshire, Pioneer Valley, FERCOG. They have one or two people. So the 10,000 then would just be for MVP? 
Yes, that's why it's listed separately. So maybe we should take out the word in current. Well, never mind. Well, in past prior, years, prior, in prior, past prior, years, prior it included. Years, yeah. yeah. I could bold it so that we know that that's for the current year. No baby, that's for sure. Okay. Um, Pat Kroll negotiated quite a reduction in our Comcast bill. Yeah, I was just noticing that. Oh, <laughs> yes. She did Go an Pat. amazing job. How did you do that? How did she do that? I she she had some leverage because she moved personally to a different company, so <laughs> she really worked them worked them over. Good. Well, great. Thanks, Pat. One hundred and seventy one oh three per month, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> great. Any other questions, anybody, or discussion? No, okay. Uh, moved and seconded for contracted services at $260,375. We'll do a roll call vote. James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. John Pereski. John Pereski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 400. Next. Uh, thanks. Um, I think open space committee was 172, 5,400. Yeah, I, I don't remember if we just had that as a miscellaneous one, but. Well, they're on the miscellaneous is on the agenda too, so we can do it. Yeah, okay, let's 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 start with the one right before that then. Let's do 171, 5,400, which is CONCOM. I move to recommend the sum of uh, $2,000 for the Conservation Commission. Second. All right. This doubled. Yeah, so so you, there's an explanation down below that um, Pete gave us. Um, their costs for 2023 had gone up quite a bit. I think we had moved money for them um, a couple months ago to cover the postage and other things. They also have been pretty intent on learning their positions, going to training, so on and so forth. Okay. Any discussion? So basically the Questions? increase reflects what was actually spent. Yeah. All right, it has been moved and seconded for conservation commission at $2,000. Any questions or discussion? Roll we'll call vote. Jim Cambius. Uh, aye. John Pereski. John Pereski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 400. Okay. The very next one, 172 5400 for Open Space Committee at $250. Make a motion to approve the Open Space Committee budget of $250, account 172 5400. Second. <clears throat> All right, any discussion? We'll call vote. James Cambius. Aye. John Pereski. John Pereski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 400. Okay. Um, might as well go to the next one. Planning Board 175-5400. I think uh, Annalise still here in case we need to talk to her. All right. And that is for $2,000, same as last year. Do we have a motion? Make a motion for a planning board budget of two thousand dollars for count one seventy five fifty four hundred. Second. All right. What have we spent so far this year? Do you have that? Yeah. Uh, I want to say that we've spent the majority of it. Good. Uh, we spent Italy seventeen eighty four one thousand okay. seventy eighty four. So, so most far. of it. Yep. Yeah, to a large extent, those are our postings for the recorder. And actually, almost every time we have to post for those public hearings and whatnot, it's 500 bucks. Right. At least mm -hmm. recently, yes. So she'll be, she'll be asking for a reserve fund transfer. Okay. Uh, is there any way, before I forget, um, is there any way that we can amend the bylaws, Brenda, to um, 
so that we don't have to post in the recorder. We can do it on our web and out in the lobby, that kind of thing. I, oh, you're, I, at, you're asking somebody who knows nothing about the bylaws. Yeah, I think it's a bylaw change. <laughs> well, somebody please make a note about it because we were going to check into that not too long ago. Because it, it's a it's actually a, a very significant expense to the town now. And not that many people get the newspaper. So it seems like it would be some other cheaper venue. That's what cool weather is. Casey would probably know that off the top of her head. Mm -hmm. I know, but we we have to do something as a town of bylaw. It's a bylaw change, I think. But whatever. Smoke like that. Any further discussion or questions? All right, uh, moved and seconded for planning board at $2,000. James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. John Pareski. John Pareski, aye. Allie Vandervelen. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 400. Okay. Zoning Board of Appeals 176 5400. We have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Zoning Board of Appeals budget for $1,000 for account 176 5400. It was second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Do they have to post as well? Yes. That's why you have um, up and down actual expenses. It depends if whatever their the issues are. Yeah, you see some years they go over and some yeah. years they don't. Just depends on the amount of activity they have. It seems to be cyclical. <laughs> Um, any discussion questions? No, um, it's been moved and seconded for zoning board of appeals at a thousand dollars. James Cambius. James Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes four zero zero. Okay. Uh, the very next one is Agricultural Commission 179-5400 for $100. I want to protest this budget. <laughs> <laughs> I really recommend the sum of $100 for the Agriculture Commission. Second. All right. Any discussion? It's it's really a placeholder, obviously. Roll call vote. James Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. John Pareski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Julie Chalf and I, that passes 400. Okay, the very next one, 182-5400 is the energy committee for $1,000, same as last year. A motion. Julie, are we going till um, 7.30 tonight? Or do we, or are we just going until we feel done? We will go as long as you can stick with us. <laughs> How long do we have you? Well, as long as we're doing easy ones, I'm okay for a little bit. Um, I'm expecting to have to step away whenever this baby wakes up. Okay. Okay. Well, baby we clock. Have a quorum in <laughs> yeah. We don't have to maintain a quorum. I don't know the answer to that. Um, you ha to make votes, you have to have a quorum. I uh, think you can do a meeting, the have a just a discussion. Yeah. You know, All right. You don't let's need a quorum. Do, do we have any? Let's do, we're partway through energy committee. Let's do this and then we'll talk about it. Do we have a motion? motion to approve energy committee budget. $1,000 account 182 Do we have a second? second. <laughs> All right. Um, any discussion? Yeah, and this is mostly postage and stuff. Mm. Uh, no, you know what? Energy Committee just has certain things that, they, that they're intent on having done. Um, they make some plans, and most of the time it doesn't happen, but Sometimes they do mailings mm. and that kind of yeah, not a lot, do, but when we did the aggregation, they, they had to do mailings. Oh, of, okay, got it. Yes. They're hoping to help, you know, let people know about Biden's Inflation Reduction Act and bipartisan infrastructure law ways to save energy. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I forgot that uh, that message was in there. Yeah. All right. Energy. Um yeah, we're actually missing the bottom of it or something. So I see that. I, I noticed so. it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's been moved and seconded for Energy Committee at $1,000. Any further discussion? No. Uh, James Cambius. James Cambius, aye. John Pareski. John Pareski, aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. 
Julie Chalfant, I that passes four zero zero. I was hoping um, nobody else had noticed that. <laughs> um, town office expense one ninety two dash fifty four thirty. Let's take a brief break from these while we still have Allison. Um, I handed out and emailed a draft finance committee annual report. I reworded the stuff that um, we talked about last time we looked at this. Um, did anybody have any input or comments on that that we should change? I regret that I did not have time to do comments because we had a pet emergency. Hmm. Okay. So I did get a chance to look at it, and I think I gave you my my little yep. notes. Yep. Okay. Yep. There's yeah, a couple much. things. Um, uh, we're getting we're getting close to ending time. The squawking has started. <laughs> okay. Um. Any um I don't have any comments on it, but I do have to say, Julie, you do a wonderful job with those. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thanks. They're nice. Um, okay. So I will email that to Pat. Sorry, I'm two days late, but you'll get it tonight or tomorrow morning. Thank you uh, very much. The financial indicator executive summary pretty much says the same thing. So I assume if nobody right. had anything on that, we'll do that. Um, okay. So that's it for that. Um, right, we can go back to budgets for see if we can I might have a I might have a couple more minutes. Okay, okay. great. Town so office expense. So town off comments on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have comments. Yeah. 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 Just what's I mean oh. general stabilization fund health reserves. How much are they? Is that healthy? Who knows? Yeah, it's a million it four. Is. Yeah. And it's a for our budget. Yep. Um Today we were talking about that, and or maybe it was yesterday in one of my conference classes, and they were um, it was no, it was this morning with our financial advisor, and they were recommending um, two and a half months of operating expenses should be in your in your stabilization account, and they equaled that to sixteen to twenty percent of your budget. I didn't get a chance to work up the numbers. I don't think we're that high. No, I don't think we are either. Some people think we're too high, but I, I would disagree wholeheartedly. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the one, I'm going to pick up my own writing. The one thing I started to, to balk at is the comment that on the whole, the financial position of the town of Deerfield continues to be strong. I feel like we're kind of going downhill. If you look at our financial indicators, we had a bunch of favorables last year that went to marginals this year. And we have some that are favorable this year only because we don't have 2023 values in there. Um, I'm really so nervous, I'm nervous about my starting, I'm, I'm, Moody's. Yeah. I, I agree because, you know, we had talked about, you know, we do have a lot of um, surplus accounts. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have to step away from the meeting now. She's really awake. All right. um, Thanks, Ellie. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Um, we can still talk about this because this doesn't require a vote. We can just discuss it, um, I think. Oh, yeah. We can discuss stuff. You just can't vote stuff. But um, we're supposed, we really should have at least two and a half million to three million in reserves for our size budget. Um, just to get back to that point, from mm -hmm. what the classes that I took, the MMA classes that I took, so, and then we have the OPEB liability that's hanging over our head that I know everyone gives me a hard time about, but it really is kicking the can down the road. And that is really not accounted for correctly if, if the calculations are what they are, what they're telling us they are. I mean, we really have millions of dollars. We, we're, we have the frontier, 50% of what's not adequately set aside there. And we don't have the DES that is not adequately set aside. And then we don't have enough on the town level for our commitment either. So I'm, I'm just talking about, you're talking about OPEB? Yes. OPEB. We have nothing to do with frontiers. They should be setting aside their own. They're not. And, and so we will, down the line, it will come back to roost. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, there, there are things that are, I'm agreeing with Julie that some things are not, I mean, I just question, we're not bad off compared to other towns. Other towns are basket cases. I'm not saying we're a basket case, but 
over my time, we are left, we are less well than we were 10 or 15 years ago. I'm just because we have more expenses, less revenue coming in from the state. That's really what the difference is. We have less revenue as a percentage of our operating budget than ever before from the state. Total, not just schools. We can see schools has gone from 36, 37% down to less than 20%. That's clear. And that's 70% of our budget. But we chapter 90 money, same 200 million. Maybe we'll get 400 million this year, but it's been 200 million since the 90s. So, I mean, those kind of things haven't changed. And that's what bothers me or worries me. Yeah, where did that do? Never and we're spending more money right now. <laughs> Maybe we should just take that sentence out. Say revenues, assessed values, new growth, and reserves are all, I don't know if good shapes, right, but we're all positive. Okay. Maybe. I think. I'm I mean, this is my thought. We're not in extremis. I, I don't have a strong opinion on that. No, we're not. We're not. Right. We're, we look good, but we're not terribly good. Yeah. Should we say it's mixed? The financial position of the town of Deerfield is mixed. Yeah. Contin yeah. 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 Okay. One thing, I, what, what I wrote down was continues to be strong, but is declining. That mm -hmm. seems to contradict itself. Well, yeah. Okay. Less strong. <laughs> less strong. I know. What's another word for less strong? <laughs> you know, less strong because we aren't spending any money on maintenance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> All right. Maybe I like your idea of just taking that line out. Revenues, assessed values, new growth, and reserves are positive. There's several every. There is a concern. Okay, that works. That works. All right. Um, we will meet. Julie, next. how about less clear? Less clear or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So next meeting. Our next meeting is March 20th, which is someday next week. I don't know. Monday. 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 Monday, mm -hmm. March 20th. And we will do SCEM, South County Senior Center, Tri Town Beach. Any miscellaneous okay. budgets we have left. We still What's need, that? we need to talk about the What's schools. We haven't voted the schools yet. Um, and I understand that they haven't, the school committee hasn't voted. Oh. So Deerfield Elementary didn't vote the budget? Was it Deerfield Elementary or Frontier that didn't vote it? Um, I don't remember either of them voting their budget. It was just a public hearing, right? Yeah. So it, it wasn't really yeah. voted. Yeah. So uh, those budgets can change, but, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But we at least have them. All right. So next Monday, we'll, regardless of whether we've done the schools, we won't get to the schools next Monday anyway with SCEM, South County Senior Center, and Tri-Town all going. So we'll do all I, three of those next week. I think um, I think they're pretty disappointed. I don't know about Zoe, but I think the rest of them are pretty disappointed <laughs> that we didn't weren't able to get the three towns to review yeah. the budgets together. Yeah, I, I know I'm disappointed about that too. Try down, I'll, try down I'll try Beach again was next year. upset. Yeah, <laughs> thank you um, for trying. And maybe plan that farther in advance and do it earlier, do it like one of the very earliest ones and maybe we'll get be able to get all three towns. It would be nice. And I think it would be nice to have a discussion among all three finance committees. It too, would too. It would be good yes. to develop that relationship. But yeah. well, give it a shot. We'll try again next year. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can't vote on anything else. So I think we're done for tonight. 
Um, I'll meet with Brenda and we'll look at what we have left because what we have left, we have to go through all the budgets and then we're going to look at the total. And then most likely we're going to be going back and revisiting some of this. So we have that left to do and we still need to go through all of the warrant articles um, for the There's for the meeting. No capital warrant articles, is that true? No, we don't. We don't have any money for capital. So yeah, yeah there's capital warrant articles, absolutely. Article. But yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I haven't heard a report um, from um, CIPC, but unless we were to take on as Casey's been talking about debt, mm -hmm. yes. just getting a, a a rolling borrowing that that mm -hmm. takes care of capital. Um, it's I don't think it's a bad idea, but we don't we haven't prioritized Julie yet. We're going to meet tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. We tomorrow. need some prioritization mm -hmm. discussions. Yeah. But we need to get through all the budgets once yeah. and understand what's in there and what's in front of us before we can do that, right? All right. So I think unless anybody else has anything, we're ready to adjourn. To all right. We don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum. We can't <laughs> just get up and walk. Whatever. I don't even think we <laughs> called ours, right, Carolyn? When um, Allie left. No, I called it. I called oh, it. Oh, you did? Okay. So go ahead and a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye.